The purpose of this videotape is to demonstrate how to help maintain or preserve the quality of sea scallops harvested and shucked at sea. There is some concern about handling practices on board fishing vessels during the summer months in the mid-Atlantic waters. The hot weather, warm seawater temperatures, and the tendency for extended trips has the potential to create problems in the quality of scallop meat. With this in mind, the following information will show how, with very little change in traditional handling procedures, the quality of scallop meat can be preserved. The sea scallop, one of the most valuable shell fisheries along the United States eastern seaboard. It's a thriving industry that's been active for well over 100 years and has dramatically increased in the mid-Atlantic region since the late 1970s. In fact, the mid-Atlantic area now contributes about 50% of the United States landings. Scallops are found from North Carolina northward to the Gulf of St. Lawrence in waters along the continental shelf. Fishing operations in these areas are conducted on a year-round basis. Sea scallops are harvested primarily by dredges operating from commercial vessels. Scallops are landed on deck, culled, and shucked to retain the adductor muscle. Shucked meats are then washed, bagged, stowed in ice, and then offloaded for further processing or delivery to market. During the hot summer months with the rise in water and air temperatures, it is critical that on-deck shucking and handling practices be improved in order to avoid problems associated with thermal abuse. Studies have shown that utilizing ice on deck during warm summer months may be a key factor in preventing thermal abuse problems to scallop meats. A typical 18-day trip during the summer period routinely uses 25 to 30 tons of ice. By utilizing ice on deck during shucking and or while holding scallop meats prior to bagging, the amount of ice used per trip should not increase significantly. Chilling meats prior to bagging reduces the amount of ice used for pre-chilling bags before permanent stowage. Transferring ice from hold to deck needs only to take place during entry into the hold for pre-chilling and stowage procedures. If insulated totes are used, one basket of ice per tote per watch is all that's needed. If totes are not used, ice may be kept on deck in a large ice cooler for use in shucking buckets during a given watch. Ice used on deck should always be used with seawater, making a mixture of approximately a one to two ratio of ice to seawater. Marking the water level on the inside of the tote will provide consistency from watch to watch. The use of an ice seawater mixture to hold and chill scallop meats on deck can have a positive effect on the quality. By using the mixture in an insulated container, the occurrence of thermal abuse can be virtually eliminated. The insulated totes provide cover and protection from the sun and can keep the scallop meats at relatively constant temperatures during the watch. All too often, harvested scallops are allowed to accumulate on deck when they're exposed to undesirable elements such as warm temperatures and drying wind. This happens when the harvesting capacity of the vessel exceeds the shucking capability of the crew. When the scallops are left unattended on a deck for long periods before shucking, Scallop temperature rises, and quality problems consistent with thermal abuse can be seen. Meat slippage, or the detachment of meat from the shell, is observed with thermally abused shell stock and signifies the onset of spoilage. However, the most visual sign of thermal abuse occurs with the wafering of cut scallop meats. Wafering is a rigor mortis type reaction where the scallop meat flattens out and loses its flaccidness, causing the texture to become somewhat rubbery. Once wafered, meats remained wafered throughout the product life cycle. These quality problems can be avoided by adjusting catch rates to shucking capacity. However, if large volumes do accumulate on deck, try to protect them by placing the scallops in shaded areas on deck, in baskets, or piling them together. While they're on deck, let clean seawater from the deck hose run over the scallops. By allowing seawater to run over the pile, scallops are kept alive and it prevents dehydration and spoilage. When large volumes of scallops are brought on deck, it is important to separate scallops of different haulbacks. Close attention should be given to which scallops are from which haulback so that older ones can be shucked first in order to minimize scallop exposure to wind and sun. Another potential problem arises when large amounts of sand are brought on deck. If not handled properly, 
sand grains can become incorporated into shucked meats and create the problem of grit. When shell stock is culled from sand piles, it is recommended to wash the shell stock off prior to transferring it to shucking boxes. This keeps sand away from the shucking area. Washing can be done by simply hosing off the baskets of scallops with a deck hose, or more thoroughly, by submerging baskets of shell stock into containers filled with seawater, and then agitate. Shucking should always occur within shaded, protected areas, as in shucking houses or along shaded areas of the rail. Always use a clean bucket filled with one quarter fresh seawater. When water temperatures exceed 70 degrees Fahrenheit, a small amount of ice should be added to shucking buckets. By shucking scallops into buckets with seawater or ice and seawater, the problem of grit or sand becoming embedded in the meat can be minimized. After the scallops have been shucked, they should be washed thoroughly and moved to the insulated containers on an hourly basis. Washing should be done on small volumes of scallop meat at a time to ensure thorough washing. Be sure to wash the meats in clean fish baskets. First, rinse the meats under low pressure with the deck hose, picking out any large pieces of shell, viscera, and any other foreign matter. Then, utilizing a container filled with clean seawater, wash the meats by plunging and swirling baskets of meats in water. The movement of water entering the holes in the basket gently washes the meats thoroughly. As mentioned before, during the hot summer periods, the use of a one to two ice seawater mixture in the tote can help eliminate the problems associated with thermal abuse. Insulated totes are ideal holding containers for the shucked meats prior to bagging and will keep the scallops chill for six to eight hours. During the period when seawater temperatures are below 55 degrees Fahrenheit, seawater alone in the insulated totes will keep the scallop meats in good condition during the holding period prior to bagging. Most totes are constructed of one-piece polyethylene with a polyurethane foam core and weigh about 65 pounds. It is recommended that each vessel place two totes on deck to accommodate large quantities. If your vessel does not have the insulated totes on deck, the one to two ice seawater mixture during warm periods can be used in the shucking buckets and held for two or three haulbacks. Then wash the meats by placing them in a basket and plunging and swirling them around in a container of an ice seawater combination. Promptly bag the scalloped meats and pre-chill the bags in the ice hold. During summer months, bag up should take place at six hour intervals if insulated totes are used and every two to three hours if totes are not used. A few clean baskets should be set aside specifically for washing and bagging procedures. By this time, the insulated totes have kept the scallops well chilled. Most often, the ice is melted within six hours, but the water still remains close to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Since bagging involves handling of the finished product, cleanliness is important. Crew members performing the bagging procedures should always wash their hands and arms prior to handling the scallops. If clothes are soiled, clean aprons should be worn. Bagging from totes is done by both brailing meats from the totes with a clean fish basket and by bailing meats and water from the tote into fish baskets, allowing the meat to drain, then pouring the meats into bags. The bottom of the tote usually has a slight amount of sand and shell fragments left over even after thorough washing. Special care should be taken so not to contaminate the clean scallops. Therefore, pour all but the last remaining pound of meats, then hand pick the last few and wash thoroughly before bagging. The placement of a false bottom inside the tote may help separate scallop meats from the collected sediment. Bags should be kept in a separate, clean environment prior to and during bagging to prevent contact with contaminated surfaces. When pouring the meats into the bags, be sure not to overfill them. When using 40-pound capacity scallop bags, they should be filled with 36 to 38 pounds of meat. If the bags are filled too much, the meats may become squashed when the bag is tied or during subsequent handling. Once the bags are filled, most often the bags are secured with two galvanized twist ties. The use of an ice pick to close bags for tying is not recommended and is not needed if the bags are filled properly. After bagging all the meats, rinse the exterior of the bags with clean seawater. This will minimize the occurrence of bag discoloration. The bags are now ready to be transferred to the ice hold for pre-chilling. When transferring the bags down to the ice hold, always hold by the pigtail with one hand 
and use the other hand underneath to carry the weight. This prevents damage to the meats occupying the top of the bags. While the bags are being moved, this is a good time to start cleaning the totes and getting ready for the next watch. The totes, wash bin, and tools used for bagging should be thoroughly cleansed after each watch. Cleaning and sanitizing this equipment should occur at least every day. Cutting boxes should be washed at least between every watch. In the meantime, while the bagging is taking place, the iceman should enter the hole to perform his task. Before entering the ice hole, however, soiled work gloves and slickers need to be removed. Clean gloves and slickers should be worn when handling bags in the hold and should remain in the hold throughout the trip. This prevents sand, grease, dirt, and other contaminants from coming in contact with the clean bags and ice. In the ice hold, the iceman should be stowing bags from the previous watch, checking the stowed bags for excessive ice melt, and when needed, adding more ice. The iceman should also be preparing the ice bed for pre-chilling bags from his watch. Prior to permanent stowage, bags should be pre-chilled to initially reduce the internal temperature. If a warm bag is placed in permanent stowage, air pockets can form around the bag and cause inadequate chilling and provide an environment for bacterial proliferation. This is the suspected cause of yellow bags. Pre-chilling bags is most efficient by placing bags on a bed of ice, then completely surrounding the bags with ice and holding until the end of the watch. Even though the scallops have been pre-chilled on deck, further holding in a chill bin will help ensure proper stowage conditions. After a period of pre-chilling, bags should be brushed off with clean seawater and the nylon bristle brush prior to stowage. Bags should be placed horizontally in such a way that three to four inches of ice comes between the bin walls and the bags. Again, it is very important that enough ice is used to make sure that the bags do not come in contact with the bin boards or each other. If this happens, it can cause elevated temperatures in the bags and lead to discoloration and or product loss. Matching bag tops with bottoms of other bags can provide for more space between them and therefore result in better icing. In typical mid-Atlantic scallop vessels, it is best to place four rows of four bags for each layer in the bin. No more than four layers should be placed in any bin without using shelves because the weight exerted on the bottom bags may cause product damage. Storage of bycatch such as flounder and monkfish should always be done in separate bins, never allowing bycatch to be stowed or come in contact with bags of scallops. As often as possible, the iceman should check stowed bags for excessive ice melt. It usually starts on the top layer of bags, along the bin walls, and down the bin boards. Halfway through a trip, the ice beds of the first bins should be checked for excessive ice melt. Re-icing is vital at this point to maintain chilling and the continuance of bag rinsing by ice melt water. After completing all the work in the ice hold, gloves and slickers need to be removed and hung up until re-entry for another round of stowing. Once the last scallops are bagged and placed in the ice hold, Deck cleaning and sanitizing needs to begin. All cleaning and sanitizing agents should always be stored in a specific area, well away from scallop handling areas and never in the ice hole. To start your thorough cleaning of the deck area, first remove all debris from the dredge netting and rings, the shucking house boxes, floors, and decks. Then, using nylon brushes and an approved detergent, start scrubbing the vessel, the shucking house, hatch cover, boat rails, and the deck itself, followed by a rinsing with clean seawater from the deck hose. After the working area is cleaned, all scallop handling equipment should be cleaned and sanitized, including the totes, wash bins, knives, and shovels. A thorough rinsing with clean seawater should always follow sanitizing. Breaking the bags out of ice storage should not begin until an offloading schedule time is known. Once the time is determined, start breaking bags out about 45 minutes prior to the offloading time. Remove the bin boards carefully to expose the iced bags. Pass the bin boards topside to be cleaned, sanitized, and stacked to dry. To free the bags from the ice, use stainless steel tools, 
They will help prevent rust and bacterial contamination of the bags. Traditionally, steel hammers and ice forks are used, but stainless steel tools should be substituted. Be careful not to puncture the bags with the sharp, heavy tools. Break out the bags and transfer them to an ice bed in an empty bin near the ice hold opening. When the vessel arrives at the dock, offloading begins. The bags need to be handled very gently, using two hands, one grabbing the pigtail, the other hand supporting the bottom. When the bag is grabbed and carried with only one hand at the pigtail, it can cause damage to the scallop meats. Cradling the bags while carrying is an acceptable method. Transfer the bags up to the weigh table on the dock. This needs to be done quickly but smoothly in order to avoid both a backup at the weigh table and minimize the amount of time the bags are out of ice. Once offloading the scallops has been completed, offloading of all bycatch should begin. It is critical that all dirty ice and foreign materials be removed immediately from the ice hold. Unused clean ice may be left in the hold, but definitely should be removed after the next trip, regardless if it is used or not. The hold should be scrubbed down with an approved detergent, rinsed with clean water from either the dock or from onboard holding tanks, and then sanitized with a hyperchlorite solution or other acceptable disinfectant. Disinfecting is always followed by a thorough rinsing with clean water. Proper cleaning and sanitizing of the hold will not only kill a great number of spoilage microorganisms which could contaminate stowed scallops of subsequent trips, but it will also help prevent off odors from developing in the hold. The freshly cleaned and sanitized bin boards are then put back into place to start preparing for icing for the next trip. Like most commercial fisheries today, the future of the sea scallop industry relies on the advancement of quality preserving techniques, which will provide the consumer with the best possible product. This video presentation demonstrates a few methods which current Mid-Atlantic scallop industry representatives can utilize at sea to maintain scallop quality, primarily during the summer period when thermal abuse is a problem. This information should be viewed as an alternative to current industry practices of handling scallops at sea and should not indicate complacency with these current handling methods. Seafood technological advancements continue and it's up to the industry to utilize these advancements to provide the very best sea scallop product. Here's a quick glance at the recommended procedures described in this tape. Scallops should be shucked into clean buckets containing seawater. If seawater temperatures exceed 70 degrees Fahrenheit, a small amount of ice should be used. Scallops should be thoroughly washed and transferred to holding totes on an hourly basis. Scallops should be held in insulated totes containing a 1 to 2 ice seawater mixture until bag up. Bag up should be at 6 to 8 hour intervals or less. Bags of scallop meats should be placed in a chill bin, covered with ice, chilled for six to eight hours, and then transferred to permanent stowage. Bags should be scrubbed with clean seawater and a nylon bristle brush before permanent stowage. Sufficient ice must be used to ensure that bags do not come in contact with bin boards, bin walls, or each other. Insulated totes, wash bins, and other tools used on deck either to store or bag scallops, should be cleaned after each watch or bag up, and thoroughly cleaned and sanitized daily, and at the conclusion of the trip.